Okay, so before we start this next section, I do want to give you time, okay? Pull out your uh, data booklet, open it up to page four, okay? Open it up to page four of your data booklet. I want you to have this open while we go, okay? If, uh, if you don't have your data booklet, you didn't bring it home, okay? If you were able to print it out, pull out that page of it, okay? If not, maybe just make these notes and say this goes with your activity series. Just do that on blank paper, okay? But this is really important to kind of have on hand as you go. So you'll definitely need page four of your data booklet for today. Um, yeah. So I want you to write these notes actually in so you have them to uh, refer to, okay? We, what we have here on page four is something called the activity series, okay? What it basically means, it's sometimes called the reactivity series, but it basically shows how reactive or unreactive certain things are, okay? The key point here is that the more reactive a metal atom is, that's the neutral one without a charge, the less reactive its ion is, and vice versa. So the more reactive, the, uh, the less reactive the atom is, then the more reactive its ion is, right? It goes both ways. So what does that really mean? It means when we look at this, okay, um, up here, let's first just kind of label it in. Okay. So how does it work? You can see on this side, there's an arrow pointing up that says increasing strength of reactants as an oxidizing agent. So up here we have really strong oxidizing agents, things that are really good at helping other things oxidize, right? Which means if they're really good at helping other things oxidize, what are they really good at doing themselves? Well, if they're good at helping other things oxidize, that means they themselves, the things up here on the top left, they are very good at being reduced. Okay, so the things on the top left are the strongest oxidizing agent, which means they're very good at being reduced themselves. But down here, right, so increasing strength, that means down here, these are the weakest oxidizing agents, right? So those are the things that are the worst at being reduced. They're very good, they're very bad as oxidizing agents which means they are very bad at reducing, okay? Or bad at being reduced. And when we say bad at, we also kind of mean they don't want to, right? The things that are good at being reduced, they really want to be reduced. Things down here that are bad at being reduced, they don't really want to be reduced. All right. And then on this side, you can see the arrow goes the other way, but increasing strength of reactants as a reducing agent. So the things down here are really good reducing agents, which means they're really good at being oxidized. Okay, that kind of goes with what we were saying before. So up here we have things, well, these are the weakest uh, reducing agents. So that means if they're the weakest reducing agents, what are they really bad at doing? They're really bad at oxidizing, right? They're really bad at helping other things get reduced. That means themselves, they're bad at being oxidized or they really don't want to be oxidized, okay? But down here, these are the strongest reducing agents, so they're really good at reducing other things, making other things be reduced. Why are they so good at it? Because they're really good at being oxidized themselves. So down here, these things are really good at being oxidized. Okay, and I'm realizing, whoops, I didn't stick with my color coding. Let's change this to red. Okay, sorry, there we go. I kind of fixed up my color coding. Uh, so there, now you kind of see on this side, on our reducing kind of side, we have the things that are really good on the left top, and we have the things that are really bad at being reduced on the left bottom. Right? So on the top, these things up here, these guys on the top left side, those ions, what are they really wanting to do? They're really wanting to do this. They're really wanting to reduce. They're very good at it, right? So these ions really do want to gain some electrons, GER, reduction. They're very good at reducing and become neutral atoms, okay? So up here at the top, they're good at, or they really want to, either way helps, right? They're up here, they're good at doing this, or they want to do this, okay? Down here, what do they really want to do? They really want to get oxidized, which means if you flip these around, if you read this backwards, right, all you'd have to do would be turn that arrow around, right? They're really good at doing this. They're really good at starting out as a neutral atom, losing an electron and becoming an ion or being oxidized, right? So down here, these guys are really good at doing this. 
Okay, and everyone else falls somewhere in the middle. They're really good at doing that. Okay, so let's relate this back to what we were saying before, that the most reactive ions have the least reactive atoms and vice versa, right? So what is our most reactive ion? Well, it would be at the very top on the left side, the gold, okay? So when it says good at being reduced, that also means, whoops, good at being reduced means it's the most reactive ions are up here okay good at being reduced means the most reactive ions are up here so this gold really wants to do this it's very much going to react and become uh, that solid gold okay but we'll look at gold over here what size size what the uh, end of the spectrum is it in oxidation terms it's really bad at being oxidized so gold really doesn't want to react this way and become gold ions, right? It really wants to just stay here. Once you have gold, it really wants to kind of stay there, okay? So it's bad at being oxidized, which makes it the least, these, this side, the top left, or the top right, sorry, have the least reactive atoms. That makes sense, right? Since it really wants to do this, it doesn't really want to go back once it's done it, okay? Just a quick side note here. This tells us a lot about the kind of metals we value, right? The precious metals we value. Look at what is our kind of top four, top three, if you don't count mercury, which is a liquid, right? It's hard to get too much use out of mercury besides in thermometers and stuff. But look at our top three, gold. Hey, what do you win if you're first place? You win gold. That's kind of considered the best metal, right? If I ask you now, hey, name a valuable metal. Most of you would probably say gold. Why do you think gold's so valuable? Because it's very unreactive when it's a solid. It really doesn't want to do this it doesn't want to go back to being an ion or oxidizing okay oxidizing is actually kind of what happens when something goes rusty as well right like uh when iron oxidizes that's the rust that you see on your car okay so uh gold is very unreactive we can find gold from like ancient civilizations and it actually looks still shiny and perfect right look at the next one after mercury which is a liquid silver hey what's what do you win if you get second place you get silver right that's kind of the second most it's very valuable too it's not quite as good as gold but it's very unreactive. It really likes to stay as pure gold, pure silver, uh, nice and shiny. And then look at the third one, copper. Okay, so bronze is not an element, right? But it's actually, it's made out of copper. It is a, uh, I believe, copper tin alloy. Don't quote me on that, but it definitely has copper in it, right? So kind of gold, silver, and so to speak, bronze, right? Kind of the three most or kind of three valuable um, metals are the least reactive as solids as atoms okay let's go down here to the other side of things so these are the most reactive atoms down here these really want to be oxidized into their ions so these are most reactive atoms they're just waiting to do this right most reactive atoms or metals whereas over here like we said the most reactive atoms will be the least reactive ions least reactive ions right so once lithium since it really does want to do this it it doesn't really want to go back right it's very good at becoming li plus so it's not very good at going back into being li right if you do something that you've really wanted to do forever and ever and i ask you to undo it you're not really going to want to listen to me right so that's kind of what this table summarizes here using the gold as an example right so au3 plus since at the top left that is a very reactive ion, okay? Which means the gold, AU solid, right? Solid gold atoms are very unreactive, okay? Very reactive ion, very unreactive uh, atom. And so we know that that means AU3 plus will easily gain electrons and be reduced, three of them, to become silver, or sorry, gold, solid gold. But solid gold will very much not want to be oxidized into AU3 plus. Okay, what does that mean if it's if AU3 plus is easily reduced, that means it's a good oxidizing agent, right? It's very good at taking electrons, so it's very good at helping something else lose its electrons, right? Same goes for the solid gold. It's a very weak reducing agent. It's very bad at taking electrons, sorry, it's very bad at losing electrons, so it's very bad at making other things gain electrons. So it's a very bad reducing agent. Okay, why do we care about all of this? Well, Okay, we can use the activity series then to predict whether or not a spontaneous, I'm just gonna put this out of the way because I'm gonna need it later. Okay, we can predict whether a spontaneous reaction will occur. 
what does it mean to be spontaneous? If you're a very spontaneous person, you just kind of do things. No one has to make you. No one can really control you. You just, you just do it, right? You just do it because you feel like it. That's what it means for a reaction too. Spontaneous reaction is one that just kind of happens. You don't need to do anything to make it happen. It'll just happen if you let it, right? If you, if you put it under the right conditions, that reaction is just going to happen, okay? What do we mean by just kind of happen? It means we don't need to put any extra energy in. It'll just do it. We don't have to force it to happen, okay? So it'll happen on its own. It's a spontaneous reaction. How do we use the electrochemical, or sorry, the activity series to figure out uh, whether reactions will be spontaneous or not? Well, it comes down to asking if this reaction happened, right? So we'd be given a reaction. We'd say, okay, look at this reaction. If it happened, would it be spontaneous? Because, and the way that we answer that is, well, is each atom or ion allowed to do the thing they are quote unquote better at, right? Compared to the other one. And if so, then they will just do it. The reaction will be spontaneous, better at or wants to do, right? The, the thing they're better at or the thing they, uh, the thing they would rather do, okay? Um, so think about this in terms of like school, right? Let's say you're really, really good at science, um, but you're not great at English. And your friend is really, really good at English, but they're not good at science. So what would you do? You would probably just naturally say, hey, let's help each other out with this, right? That's a good deal for both of you. You're both allowed to do the thing you're better at. You'll say, I'll do your science homework. They say, okay, I'll do your English homework. Uh, you shouldn't do that because you won't learn anything, but you get what I mean, right? So uh, the same idea here. Now, what if you were better at uh, science, just like before, you were better at science, and they were better at English, and they said, hey, how about I do your science homework and you do my English homework? Would you enter that deal? Well, no, because you're both going to do the thing that you're worse at in that case, right? Why would you have that deal? That's just, you just wouldn't do that, okay? So if it's a spontaneous reaction, both atoms or ion, both atom, sorry, the atom and ion are both allowed to do the thing they're better at, right? So you kind of take the class that you're better at and say, I'll do the homework. Let's just do this. This seems like a good deal. But it's a stupid deal if you end up both doing the thing you're worse at, right? All that's going to do is lower both of your marks. Okay, so how do we apply this? Well, we look, just like always, we look at a reaction, say, okay, what's happening to each thing? And then compare, are they allowed to do what they're better at? So let's start off with uh, this reaction here. So we have copper nitrate and zinc becoming zinc nitrate and copper. So first things first, let's just figure out uh, what is happening to each thing. So copper is part of a compound here, right? So it would have a charge, two nitrates with a charge of minus one. So this must be copper two plus, right? Nitrate, if you look on your table of polyatomic, always has a charge of one minus. Okay, and then we have poor lonely zinc all by himself, just an atom. So that is zinc uh, zero. Whoa, that's huge. Just zinc zero. Okay, and then things have changed for zinc. Now it's part of a compound. So what's zinc's charge? Look on your periodic table. That one is always the same. It's always two plus. Okay, now nitrate, still part of a compound. So still has its charge as an ion, one minus. And now copper is the one that's all alone. So it's just an atom now. What's its charge? When it's an atom, same as everything else when it's an atom, zero. Okay, so we can see here, uh, let's kind of go through these questions it's asking us. So it says zinc is near the bottom right. So to look, see what they're talking about, let's pull out our activity series. Again, this is page four of your data booklet. I'm just gonna pull it out so we can read it along with it. Zinc is, at the, is near the bottom right well below copper so let's find it okay zinc solid zinc where is zinc notice not zinc two plus right because that's not what we had before what did we have before we had zinc uh here okay so solid zinc is what's present before what is happening to zinc well it's going from being just plain old zinc just plain old zinc with no charge to becoming what is it after it's an ion it's zinc two plus Okay, so zinc's down here. Remember, these are the ones that are uh, down here. If you look at your periodic table, these are very good at being oxidized. As you go down, they get better at being oxidized. Okay, so this thing is, what is this? What kind of reaction is this? Is it getting more negative or less negative? Well, it's getting less negative, right? It's losing electrons. It's going from zero to two plus. So this is an oxidation reaction. Okay, let's ask us. Zinc is way below copper. Right, zinc is down here. 
copper, solid copper is way up here. So is zinc better at oxidizing than copper? Yeah, right? These are the best at oxidizing. Best at getting oxidized, right? These are the worst up here. These are the worst at oxidizing. So is zinc allowed to do what it's better at by this reaction? Yeah, it's oxidizing. That's what it wanted to do, right? So zinc got oxidized. It's better at copper than doing that. So yes. Okay. Let's read the next part. Copper 2 plus is near the top left, well above zinc 2 plus. So let's just find that. Copper uh, 2 plus, zinc. Where'd you go? Zinc 2 plus, right? So these guys are best at reduction. Remember, these guys are the worst at reduction. So up here we have copper. What's copper doing? Is it getting reduced? Well, yeah, it went from copper to plus, right? It went from copper to plus to just plain old solid copper, right? Okay, so copper was reduced. Is copper better at reducing than zinc? Yeah, it's up here closer to the best, right? So copper is definitely better at zinc than reducing. So copper got reduced. Was it allowed to do what it's better at? Yes, it was. So both things are allowed to do what they're better at. Okay. And it says whenever this happens, okay, whenever this happens, the reaction will be spontaneous. It will just happen on its own. So would this reaction be spontaneous? You betcha. Right. So it is spontaneous. Didn't mean to write it in this, but oh well. Okay. Spontaneous. Because both things are allowed to do what they are better at. Check. Check. Okay. Um, okay. Last kind of note here. It's good to understand why this kind of works, but there is a bit of a kind of a quicker way, I guess, to figure it out without having to think about all of this stuff. But this works because, so the trick I'm about to show you, I mean, works because of all this stuff. Okay. But it kind of can make it a bit of a quicker way to check. So this is an important note here. This kind of sums this up. Whenever the ion that will react, so the ion that will react is above the atom that will react on the activity series, okay, a spontaneous reaction will occur. And then if that's not true, a spontaneous reaction will not occur. We would have to put in extra energy to uh, get that to work. So I'll show you what I mean here, okay? So I've just brought down our reactivity series. We have a bit more of a close-up on it again and then just rewritten the reaction up there so I don't have to keep scrolling back. But what does this kind of mean here? It says, whenever the ion that will react is above the atom that will react. So we just have to figure out what's the ion that's going to react and what's the atom that's going to react or might react if it's a spontaneous, okay? So that means we're thinking about before. What do we have sitting around before? Because we don't actually know if this stuff is gonna happen for sure, right? That's what we're trying to figure out. So what is there to possibly react? Well. The atom we have is zinc, right? And the ion we have is copper 2 plus, right? So that is our ion and that is our atom. So now if we find both on the periodic, or the, sorry, the activity series, we can say, okay, will this be spontaneous? And it says it will be spontaneous if the ion is above the atom, okay? So our ion is copper 2 plus. All the ions are on this side, so we gotta find Copper 2 plus, okay, copper 2 plus, copper 2 plus, ah, there it is. So there's copper 2 plus, okay. And then we have to find our atom on the other side, zinc. So we need to look for solid zinc, right? Should be an S there, should be an AQ there. Okay, so solid zinc. It's not going to be on this side, it's going to be on this side because it's an atom. Okay, zinc, right? There we go. So when you're finding the ion and the atom, you're always going to be finding one thing on this side and one thing on this side. Okay, so there we go. We found our atom and our ion. What was the rule? Whenever the atom, sorry, whenever the ion is above the atom, the reaction will be spontaneous. Okay, so that means based on this, would this be spontaneous? Yeah, our ion is above our atom, right? They're both being allowed to do what they're better at. So remember, uh, things up here are good at doing this. Things down here are good at doing this. We're letting this become this and we're letting zinc become zinc two plus right so we're letting them do what they're better at okay a little kind of trick that i think of to help me remember it is imagine like a, a mario game again right left to right left to right this would be downhill right 
water flows downhill naturally. You don't have to do anything or a ball will roll downhill. All you got to do is let it happen and the ball will roll downhill. Okay. But a ball will never just start rolling uphill. So I think of it as water flows downhill, balls roll downhill. So this is kind of downhill. If when you connect your two things, you make that shape, okay, it will be then spontaneous. However, if you do it the other way, right, if you make that shape, it will be non-spontaneous. Oh, that looks horrible. Okay, I'm just going to go back to the bigger one so we can add that in. So add this in on your page four, okay, wherever you have room. But essentially, when you connect the atom and the metal, sorry, the atom and the ion, if you make this shape, okay, if you make this shape, that's going to be, it's downhill, so that's a spontaneous reaction, right? But if you make this shape, okay, that is kind of uphill, right? So that would be an uphill, or a, so that would be non spontaneous there we go that looks a bit better so find the atom and the ion that are going to react the things that you have before okay connect them on the table and if you go a little downhill that's going to be spontaneous right it just happens a ball just rolls downhill but if it goes uphill that's going to be non-spontaneous right a ball does not just roll uphill on its own okay so make sure you have all of these notes kind of added on your page four because it's nice to have them uh, as you're working through these kind of practice problems let's do a couple to get it okay just figure out would these be spontaneous uh, or not essentially so I just grabbed our uh, activity series here okay um, and we'll kind of use our our knowledge now that if it goes downhill it's gonna be spontaneous if it goes quote unquote uphill it's gonna be non spontaneous okay so first let's just figure out hey what could react and what's the atom and the ion out of that okay It'll always be metals. Notice nowhere on this table are there non-metals. So for us in Science 20, we're always only looking at the spontaneity of metals reacting. Okay. Okay. Looking at gold, solid gold here, right? Is that an atom or is that our ion? Well, does it have a charge? Nope. Right. So that must be our um, atom. Okay. So that's our atom. It's A-U-S. What's our ion? Well, the one that's going to be part of the redox, right? You can tell chloride is a spectator ion. It's not gonna change, one minus here, one minus there. But silver, that is an ion. That is our Ag plus, right? And if this reaction occurs spontaneously, it will be reduced. Okay, so if this reaction occurs spontaneously, gold would be oxidized, silver ions would be reduced. So let's just go ahead and find both of those on our activity series. We have gold, the atom. Okay, so find the atom. Careful, don't make this mistake. Is that what we have before? Is that our gold atom? No, that's a gold ion, right? So don't do that, okay? We have not AU3+, plus. we have AU, solid, right? Not a AU3 plus aqueous, AU, solid. So that's what we're looking for, okay, on the other side. What else is present before? Well, our ion, AG plus, silver. Okay, where is that? There we go, found it, okay? Not this thing, that would be solid silver. That's not there before. It might be there after if this reaction is spontaneous, but it's not there before, okay? And so is this reaction spontaneous? Well, let's just kind of see, let's connect them. Aha, uphill, okay. Slightly uphill, but definitely uphill, right? Not downhill. So will this reaction be spontaneous? No, this is a non-spontaneous reaction. Okay, and again, we can kind of confirm that with what we uh, know about what this table actually tells us, right? Gold is going from zero to three plus. Gold is being oxidized here. Remember, gold really hates being oxidized, okay? This stuff is really, gold is very unreactive, okay? Unreactive, bad at oxidizing. So if we ever have a reaction that's telling us gold is gonna be oxidized, that's probably not gonna be, as, and it, not even probably, that's not gonna be a spontaneous reaction, okay? Because it's really bad at doing what we're trying to make it do, or it really doesn't want to do that. It really wants to do this, right? But that's not what we're asking it to do here, okay? Silver is pretty good at this, but it's not better than gold. So they would not just naturally react like that. Okay, let's look at the next one here. Um, again, kind of first step, right? is think about what is there here to react, right? What is my atom, my metal atom, and what is my metal ion 
that are able to react here. Well, in terms of metals, right, we see bromine there, but remember bromine has a charge of one minus here and a charge of one minus here. So that's a spectator. That's not really part of the redox. So it's not going to play a role in spontaneity, right? Spontaneity being spontaneous or not. Okay. So the metals though, those are what's on our table. So we have iron and lead. Again, this is one where I would say do it on the whiteboards. Okay. So pause the video, try it out on your own, see how it goes, determine if this reaction would be spontaneous or not. And then, uh, come back and see what I did. Okay. But I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, right now, what do you think? What's our atom? What's our ion? Well, the atom, like always is going to be all by itself, right? It's going to be uh, lonely with no charge. So this lead right here must be our atom. So our atom is PB solid, solid PB, solid lead. Okay. Um, what about our ion? Well, that kind of only leaves one option, right? Iron. Iron is, see, it's part of a ionic compound. So it's our ion. So if it's uh, evened out with bromine of one, with two bromines, sorry, that each have a charge of one minus, and there's only one of it, well, then it's one charge must be two plus. Whoops, I don't know why I'm writing that. It's Fe two plus. Okay. Okay. So what's our ion here that could react? Well, kind of only leaves us one option now, right? It must be iron, right? And now see how iron is part of an ionic compound? That makes sense. It must have a charge here, okay? So this is our ion. What ion is it? Well, definitely Fe something. Notice how there's two bromines. Each one has a charge of one minus. So these two bromines are going to provide a charge of two minus total, right? And if there's only one iron, its charge must be two plus. Okay, so now we found our atom. We found our ion. We know what's kind of uh, here, right? What is present to see if this part is going to happen, right? We don't know if that's going to happen, at least not on its own. We got to figure that out now. That's what this question is asking us to do. So find the ion, okay? Which side will the ion be on? Notice how these are all ions and these are all atoms, right? All neutral. So don't make that mistake. Iron, Fe2+, Fe2+, okay. There we go. Found it. But lead, Pb, okay, let's look for lead. Pb is an atom. So, aha, there's lead, PB, okay, and like always, if our ion is below, sorry, if our ion is above our atom, the reaction will be spontaneous. Let's look at this thing. Is this spontaneous? We have iron, two plus, and lead, neutral, okay, will that be spontaneous? Is it downhill? Will the ball just roll down that hill if you let it go? Nope, right? That's uphill. So that would be non-spontaneous once again. Okay, non-spontaneous. All right, so we can think about it in terms of these things are really good at going this way, right? Down here, really good at going this way. Up here, really good at going this way. What are we trying to make lead do? We are trying to make lead go this way, right? And we're trying to make iron go this way, okay? Iron is better at going the other way and lead is better at going the other way. So that they're, they're, we're trading science and English even though we're better at the other one, right? This is the scenario where why would I help you with English if you're the one that's better at English and why would you help me with science if I'm the one that's better at science, okay? So you just wouldn't make that deal. So this reaction would be non-spontaneous. Okay, you can now do all of the first two pages, the redox part, until it starts talking about electrochemical cells uh, for the formative uh, practice assignment.